So we have air at a pressure of 125 kPa and a temperature of 460 Kelvin and a velocity of 40 meters per second enters a nozzle operating at steady state and expands adiabatically at, to the exit where the pressure is 85 kPa and the velocity is 280 meters per second. So that's a long first sentence, but a lot of information in it. And continuing to read, model the air as an ideal gas, which is good, with the constant K of 1.4. So it's like a cold air standard analysis. Determine the temperature at the exit in Kelvin and the percent isentropic nozzle efficiency. Well, let's go slow. It's going to be a long problem. So we have a nozzle. I'm going to show it as basically the cross-sectional area is going down as you flow through that nozzle and uh, goes from one to two um, we don't have supersonic flow it's a conventional uh, um, nozzle in the sense that it's subsonic okay so we have inlet state one and exit state two and when you have a nozzle what's interesting is is that the specific kinetic energy going out is not necessarily negligible. Why? Because that's equal to one half velocity exit squared. And the velocity at the exit, the purpose of the nozzle is to make that large. So if you want a large exit speed, then you can have uh, appreciable kinetic energy going out of the nozzle. Okay, so we introduce a control volume for our nozzle. And we do the first law, conservation of energy, and then the second law for um, um, entropy balance for this nozzle. So for our energy balance, or first law, energy equation, it's going to be steady state, and we have no heat transfer. We have no power out, so that's zero. So Q is zero. Q dot zero, W dot zero, you have one mass flow rate coming in that's the same mass flow rate going out. So it's bringing with it its inlet enthalpy and its inlet kinetic energy, and it's taking away its exit enthalpy and exit kinetic energy. There you go. So that's our first law. Okay. Uh, if you want to, we can rearrange that. We can write it as um, H. 2 minus H1. H2 minus H1 is equal to kinetic energy 1 minus the kinetic energy 2. All right. We look at the wording of our problem, and because they gave us a constant K of 1.4, basically saying don't use the air tables, assume constant specific heats, and so if I need to get C sub P or C sub V, I can use an equation that was introduced way back in chapter three. So go and take a look at equation 3.47 in our textbook. And so if you need C sub P, it's equal to K, this is the ratio of specific heats, times the R divided by K minus one. Okay, and so it's air, so we know what R is. R is equal to R bar divided by the molar mass of the air. The molar mass of the air, 28.97. And we can calculate this specific heat constant pressure, 1.00445. Way too many digits. Often we just put 1.005 as a good number, but 1.00445 uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay. So you can replace the change in enthalpy by C sub P T2 minus T1 equal to Ke1 minus Ke2. So we can solve for T2. T2 is equal to T1 plus 1 over the specific heat constant pressure times Ke1 minus Ke2. All right. So... Let's take a look at this. 
the exit temperature T2 will be equal to our inlet temperature 460 Kelvin plus I'm going to put uh, uh, one um, let's let's do this, um, this kinetic energy one is velocity one which is coming in it's just it's a uh, 40 um, squared minus our exit speed they give us 280 squared both of those have units of meter squared per second squared okay I need the one half so one half V squared that's our kinetic energy and then I use a unit conversion factor that 1000 meter squared per second squared is precisely a kilojoule per kilogram we've used that a number of times and then we have to divide the whole thing by the specific heat which we just calculated 1.00445 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin notice the units meter squared per second squared go kilojoules per kilogram go you're left with Kelvin on both of those and you get the exit temperature coming in at 400 and 21.8 Kelvin. Done with part A. All right, now what is that percent isentropic nozzle efficiency? Well, the definition of the nozzle isentropic efficiency we can look up and its uh, equation 6.47 in our textbook and the efficiency of the nozzle is equal to the specific kinetic energy at the exit divided by the specific kinetic energy at the exit assuming isentropic flow through the nozzle okay well, what is our specific kinetic energy at the exit? That's our one-half the velocity at the exit squared, which we were given 280 meters per second. So we can calculate that. That comes in at a whopping 39.20 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, how do I calculate the kinetic energy at the exit assuming isentropic flow well you go back to not the energy balance but an entropy balance let me try and write it up here entropy balance and you have a steady state there's no Q dot the divided by TB because it's adiabatic and you have the mass flow rate with the entropy in minus the entropy out plus any irreversibilities leading to the generation of entropy. Well, we just said that that's zero, so S1 is equal to S2. Okay. So how do I calculate then the speed coming out at two? Well, you look back at our kinetic energy equation and you really need to calculate the exit um, temperature. So from the entropy balance equation, we have that S2 minus S1 is equal to zero. And then you have th basically three different choices. You can go with a couple of them. I'm going to go slow here. Um, basically, you could have a C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 minus R natural log of P2 over P1. That would allow you to calculate any change in entropy assuming constant specific heats. Here, if you set the equation equal to zero, maybe I should have just done it that way, set it to zero. Zero is equal to this okay then what you can do is you can manipulate this by a few algebraic steps so we'll get uh, c sub p natural log of t2 over t1 equal to and what i really should do is i should put an s2 on this because that's a different 
exit temperature when when you have this equation where I'm saying s2 minus s1 is equal to zero well if you don't get the same exit temperature you get a different exit temperature even though the pressures are the same let's continue the algebra this is going to be r natural log of p2 over p1 so we'll divide over by c sub p good and then we'll recall that even from this equation 3.47 it's pretty obvious that c sub p divided by r is equal to k over k minus 1 or r divided by c sub p is k minus 1 over k so we can replace that right there and we can say that we're going to get the natural log of this p2 over p1 all of that raised to the power k minus 1 over k all of that the natural log of then you have the natural log of t2s divided by t1 and then you exponentiate both sides and you find t2s divided by t1 is equal to the natural law not the natural law the ratio of pressures p2 to p1 all to the k minus 1 over k that's one of those very important equations um, it's equation 6.43 in our textbook there's a number of assumptions in it I've added the subscript s on this t2 but the way they've written it it's for an ideal gas with constant K and it's undergoing isentropic process so no change in entropy isentropic okay so what we do is we calculate the T2s given our ratio of pressures and our inlet temperature so it's 460 Kelvin for our inlet temperature our pressure on the exit was um, 85 the pressure on the inlet 125 and we have the 1.4 minus 1 so 0.4 divided by 1.4 all that up there in the exponent and you calculate the T2 S is 412 Kelvin you stop you pause you look at your numbers and you say well it it was coming out at 422 Kelvin now it's coming out at 412 Kelvin it's colder well it's colder because it was reversible it's isentropic and what's going to happen is you're going to have a higher kinetic energy out so we come back to our energy equation and we can rewrite this as kinetic energy out at state 2 assuming isentropic is the kinetic energy in at 1 okay um, either plus or minus let's put minus C sub P T 2 S minus T 1 okay so we calculate the inlet kinetic energy which was uh, 1 just put 40 squared divided by 2000 that'll give us in units of kilojoules per kilogram then we have minus our specific heat which was 1.0044 I'm gonna stop there our t2s 412 minus t1 460 and you calculate the specific um, the kinetic yeah specific kinetic energy at the exit assuming isentropic flow is 49.008 kilojoules per kilogram okay so now we can come up here and get our isentropic efficiency what was our actual exit specific kinetic energy oh, I don't know if I actually calculated it um, no I did it's 39.20 you divide by the maximum 49.01 and you come in with an isentropic efficiency of that nozzle right at 80 percent and that's our answer for part B um, a lot of students find these problems challenging because you have to remember a lot of information out of chapter 3 and then there's some algebraic manipulations 
to get to simple equations like ch in chapter 6, that's 6.43. And sometimes they get lost, like what is, how are these equations being derived? How do they come about? And then they start to just plug and chug. But that's dangerous because if you don't know what the limits are on these equations and how they're derived and what what how to use them properly you can plug and chug and put it in the wrong place but hopefully this uh, problem solving this problem helps and uh, thank you